Welcome everybody on Wednesday night to Global Outreach Week. I know a lot of folks joined us during the music set, so I want to welcome you again. Uh, you are in for a treat tonight. How many folks joined us last night for uh, France? Yeah. So you know what a great uh, experience we've got in the gym. You know about how the breakout sessions are going to work. But tonight our, uh, our keynote speaker uh, is not Todd Tyson. It's uh, my friend Helen from Nicaragua. And uh, I get the privilege of just sharing a little bit about Helen before she comes up. But I'll let you know this, uh, that I've been down to see Helen's ministry and experience that and work alongside her uh, a couple times uh, in 2006 and again in 2007. And then earlier this year, I just was praying and God really felt, I, I just felt God telling me that I needed to go back. Uh, and so I'm taking uh, about a dozen of, of Curtis Lake's finest with me, uh, who many of whom are in the room tonight, who is going with me in November to uh, join Helen. Yeah, uh, a lot of folks, yeah. And Jeff on the stage tonight too. But um, here's the great thing. I just want to just let you know, when you talk about the real deal, when you see, um, when you see people who have just laid it all on the line. You, you probably got a sense of this on Sunday from her, but Helen is the real deal. Helen, Helen just gave her entire life to these kids, and I'll tell you, these kids are exceptional. She's running a first-rate facility. These kids who are coming from the worst of the worst scenarios are being given the best of the best outcomes. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just heartwarming to see. It's heartwarming to experience. And I can't wait to be back there in November. You are, gonna be, um, you are just going to be so touched by hearing Helen's uh, story about what's going on at Seagrin tonight. But first, we have this great video about what's happening down there. Check it out. Hello everybody, my name is Helen, and I'm really happy to be here uh, tonight and to share with you a little bit what we are doing in Nicaragua. Many of you already know my testimony, and I'm not going to tell my testimony tonight. I just want you to share with you some slides about what we are doing over there and what God is doing in the ministry and Seacring. Uh, Seacring uh, can you, you can see in the name, Seacring means like, it's, in English it's like um, Chris, uh, 
it's Christian Center for Nicaraguan Children. So uh, you can see an uh, old picture over there. We have more kids now. And um, Sikring is located. Oh, well. Yes, well, I, we have a map of Nicaragua. Exactly, it's in the middle of a big lake. It's one of the biggest lakes in Nicaragua. And um, the Ometepe Island is a big uh, two volcanoes island. We live around that uh, volcanoes. And thanks God, one of those is no erupting, you know, we are safe over there, and uh, we are so happy to to be over there working, um, as you can read over there. This orphanage was opened in 1970 for another uh, people that came to, to Ometepe Island, but it was closed in 1979 because the revolution, you know, the Sandinistas took the power over there, and there were, so, there were a war over there, and they closed the place. And the Sandinista took control of that uh, center, and they used like a military base over there for many years. So in 1990, I, I came to Nicaragua again. They, again, they have a new government, a democratic government over there. And so they had the doors open again to restart this place. And so we came here to start working. And now uh, we have been there for 24 years. Thanks God for that. <laughs> the idea of seeking and the purpose of seeking is to change the life of children who uh, are abandoned, mistreated, they live in uh, poverty, and uh, they may be living in unsafe home environments. Uh, Seeking provides the children of food, clothing, medication, education, Christian education, which is the most important thing for us to share with the children. And also we have a psychologist that helps them and uh, we have a tutor that helps them also with their classes. And it's like a home, you know, it's a place that uh, these children can uh, learn many good things. Um, as you can read over there, we had 24 children in, the, in this place. It's not an orphanage anymore because many of them have some relatives, you know, but people that really don't care about them. So, and uh, 20 of them are in educational scholarship, and four of them are under the government protection. The government sent kids to our place and to other places, but with the new government, well, the Sandinistas came again like seven years ago to the government, and they don't like to send kids to the center. They say it's no the best place for our children to be, but uh, we know that uh, Seekring and other Christian places are the best place for the children to be because they are receiving the, the word of God over there. Um, as you see, we provide everything we can do, you know, for them. And they have a lot of needs, but we have a feeding plan. Uh, we supply with all these good implements, and even we have a school over there and uh, there are some pictures of the children that I can tell you, like the testimony of Hilario. Hilario is 10 years old, and he used to live in the streets. He has a mother, but his mother was living with another man that was no his dad. And this guy tied tie him uh, with a rope, you know, in, in, in their house, and not let him to go out. He, how you say, mistreat him so much, so bad, that when Hilario ran away from his house, he was sleeping in the streets, and so uh, the ministry of the family from the government, they uh, brought him to Sikring. And even at the beginning, sometimes we have gringo, Americans coming to Sikring, and he don't lie. I'm sorry, uh, the gringos, <laughs> yeah, we call gringos. And it was funny because the first week that he was there, there were some missionaries over there, and he just took a piece of stick, uh, of wood, and started trying to hit some of them. Now he loves gringos. 
But God has been changing his life. You can see his smile, so he's so happy over there. He's learning about uh, God. He loves to go to church and to be singing and praising God. I mean, it's a miracle. It's a big miracle. And even Derek and Alonso, they are brothers, and their mother has like another four children. She just feed them like once a day. They never send them to school. So she asks for help, and it's what we are doing now, trying to help these really poor families. And it's funny because when they were the first uh, month in seeking and then their mother came to visit them, just to listen to them saying, Mama, we have a lot of toys. Mama, we eat really good in here. Oh, you know, it's... It's something that touched your heart because you can see that uh, they are happy and we are doing the right thing with them. Some of you asked me about what we do in Seeking and what, the are, what are the daily activities. And, uh, you know, the kids, they have chores over there. And uh, we, we teach them to love our place and see this place like a home, you know. And... You know, it's, it's funny to go into the boys' room because when we make a tour over there and, and show the people about Seacreen and the people get in the boys' room, they say, this is clean. I never saw a boys' room really clean. But we, we teach them to be, you know, careful with the things that they have over there. Also, as you can see, we have a chicken pot, uh, we had two kinds of chickens, the ones that lay eggs, and also the ones that uh, we make really fat, and then we kill it, and then we eat it, and we give also to the gringos that come, and they eat chickens. But the kids learn how to, to be helping in this, because it's for them, you know. And also they like to be cleaning around, it's many things doing around. Also. They have a tutoring session. We have a tutor, a person who after school is there helping them with the homework. Some kids have some problems learning, and uh, but this guy is in charge of that. So we are really happy because many of the kids have now really good grace, grades, and they, they are learning fast. Okay, well, we, we also, and as I told you, the most important thing for us is to share with them the gospel of God. And we have seen them, you know, praising God and singing to God that we say sometimes they do better than we do, you know. Sometimes we have like this, in this picture, a bonfire. And they just start singing and then we pray together. And it's funny because sometimes they come and they put their hands, you know, in us and start praying for us. and. It's incredible how God is moving in their lives. Also, we have time for recreation today, and we try to take them to field trips and go to the river. And I think the, the thing that is going in November, the, they are going to have the opportunity to visit some nice places in, in Ometepe Island. We have the water, the eye of the water. It's a beautiful place over there. And the kids enjoy very much having weekends uh, in family. Also, uh, we give, how you say, rewards to the kids, uh, like a reward, yeah. Um, some of them are really good kids, and some of them give us some problems, but when they see that the other get uh, like a nice teacher or something, they try to be better, you know? So we try to do that with them, to teach them and also, um, as we have been working for 24 years in Seacring, uh, some of them already are in the university. We have six kids in the university. So they leave the island and the, they go to Managua, which is the capital. And they stay, we have a house over there that um, we built over there and they are uh, studying. And this is the picture of uh, Pastor Henry and Irma. They used to be the directors of Seacring many years ago, and they moved to Managua to be pastors over there. And uh, 
So we send the one that finished high school, we sent to Managua, and we let, you know, then to go to university. There is people that ask me until what age we had the kids in Sikring. Well, it depends. If they finish high school at 18, um, we send them to university and we look for sponsors and people that can help them uh, to, to study. And if they are 19 and they still in universe, in high school, we keep them in Sikring, but they help us. They had to work during the day and study in the weekends. And then they will have the opportunity to, to go to Managua. They work with a program called Talents to Treasures. It's like a scholarship and they do, we call, uh, ex they make extra points, like they do uh, community service hours, and like for example, for an hour that they serve in the community, they make five dollars. So uh, this organization that is helping, they look for sponsors that pay that five dollars that they make. So they they work for. I mean, it's not just give me, give me money to go to university, it's just also about the working in the community, in church, or cleaning in the parks, uh, you know, doing all they can do to make extra hours, and they can also uh, make some money for, for their stu studies. Um, in Managua, they pay for food, electricity, school projects, uh, many things over there, so we are so happy. This is a picture of Kayla that came to Sikring. She is studying in Managua, and she always is trying to get involved in Sikring things, so she comes to the island and teach uh, the teachers how to use the colors, how to make new colors, and that way the teachers can, you know, teach the, the kids in the school. So it's neat that they grew up, they are studying, but at the same time they come and they help us in, in the orphanage. Well, we have projects around that we, we want to share with you. We open, open this clothing store that was an American idea of a friend of us, and it's a really good idea. Like the group bring clothes with the teens and they give to this store and we open the store and people from the community come and buy clothes. And it was good the first opening week. We, we made like $200 or so, $250, it was great. And uh, so we, we are trying to do the Hazel, who is in the picture, she came when, to Sikrin when she was seven months old. And she has a learning program, so she goes really slow. Now she is like in the junior high, and she's 20, but uh, she's, She's the one that uh, works in, in this store, so we give her uh, some percent of the money that we make, and she can continue studying. Also, well, those are part of the project that we are working and we want to work. We have earthquakes. I don't know if you hear that we, we have earthquakes like three or four months ago in Nicaragua, and we need to build a new office. You can see that the walls are no good and it's not safe to work over there. And uh, well, here are the, our friends, the chickens. We try to sell, we are selling the eggs over there. And it's funny because they enjoy so much, the boys enjoy so much to, to prepare all this thing. They ask me, Helen, are you going to, to Moyogalpa? Say, oh, here are 10 of those boxes. Each one has three eggs. And they just jump out of the car and go to different stores, and they buy, they buy the eggs, so it helps Sikrin too. It's great. Also, we are finishing this missionary house. It's not done yet, but this is a house for groups. It's a very nice house. It's like for 20 persons, and uh, we just need to finish the roof and, and two bathrooms, but it has been built almost for four years, little by little, with the help of different groups. And uh, I think maybe this next year is going to be finished. Also, this is the area where the groups stay. It used to be a place where people, uh, where the kids were, but now they had their own houses. So this is especially for teens. And uh, in the end, is the office that we need to, to build a new one. But 
We are trying to put a nice roof over there so the groups can have a time to pray and to be together. This is our transportation. As you see, we take the kids in the top to church. No, it's a joke. I'm, well, <laughs> he told me to say something like that, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> the kids are praying for a new bus because this is really old and uh, make noises when we go to church in here. And we always are asking the bus driver, who is Osvaldo, who is a, a guy that grew up over there, is everything okay, Osvaldo? Because it's a clack, 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 clack. Don't worry, don't worry. We're making that home, don't worry. <laughs> but we are praying, and, um, and also we, we are praying for a new pickup because the one that we got in, in 2006 uh, gave us so much trouble. It's a Ford, so it means... <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, somebody told me that Ford means fix or repair daily. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. But it is true with us. I mean, it's a bad truck. <laughs> no, somebody told me that it was made in Argentina, so it's no American truck. Over there. Okay, we have this school, and uh, also we are making some area for the uh, principal uh, office and storage. And as I say, we had the school, and we work with the community. We are feeding 82 kids five days a week which is something big for us. It's God let us to open this. We are going to be working with them, and uh, it's so nice to see the kids so grateful with God because they can have their own meal. It, this is a really poor area in Ometepe Island, and so for us it's a blessing to be doing this with them. Also, it's the first school in the island where we teach English, which is great. And now we need a volunteer that would like to be teaching English over there because the girl that went to uh, Ometepe Island to be the teacher now is my assistant. So as you know, I am here. She has a lot of work over there. And we find out that we need another English teacher over there. So if God tells you, talk to the pastor and... <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to be teaching them, and as you see in the video, the kids, well, they say thank you, but they know more than that, more than thank you. <laughs> they say, gringos, gringos, we love gringos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you see, that's funny. Every time we need something in the school, we tell them, okay, let's go and pray because God will provide. And to see the kids getting on their knees and praying, I mean, it's awesome. And then to see then how, uh, you know, they, they are so happy to see the, co the things coming and they say, God, answer our prayers. Oh, wow. It, it's incredible. So um, we are making Secret La uh, the school as a real Christian school. And the teachers, they are traveling to Costa Rica to learn about how to have a Christian school. So in next year, Every, every class is going to be, uh, to be teaching, but using the Word of God. So we are learning to do that, and it's awesome, because that way we can also work with the parents in the community. And, uh, well, it's most of the things that I, I had to tell you. Also, I forgot, and it's known in this, is that um, we have sewing classes with the pastor wife, and the girls are learning how to make clothes and many things. And also we have uh, computer classes in, in Secret for the young people and also for people that want to come from the community. And it's great because in our school, this organization came and gave a small laptops to the 82 kids to learn. And they put a big antenna uh, to have Wi-Fi. So I think in February next year, we're going to start having uh, this work. And so it's, it's great what God is doing over there. And I just have to thank you for inviting me to share uh, with you about what we are doing in Ometepe. And I appreciate very much your prayers for us because it's 
has been no easy. The government doesn't help very much over there, and uh, but we have a great God that is in our sides, and He is protecting us every day. And we know that, and the children know that. So together, we we can make big things, and um, we know our goal is to raise them to become healthy, productive members of this soci society and also uh, a good Christians. So maybe they can change the life of many other people, you know, telling their testimonies. Uh, I know the children, the young people who is in the university, who are in the university, they are preaching others about the gospel and their testimony touch many hearts of other students in university. Thank you so much for letting me share this with you.